their worst movies of uh, 2023 lists. Now, my opinion on this, I'm of the camp that I don't ever really want to put out a worst movies list. And I think I have in the past, but I've seen the arguments, you know, movies are hard to make. I've never made a movie on my own. I think it's kind of harsh, especially now that I have a larger platform, more people to just get up and say, this was the worst. So the thing I do instead is I do a disappointing list. I do movies I was really looking forward to. And when I saw those movies, they really let me down. And obviously you'll know my disappointing list towards the end of the year. Uh, you could probably guess a couple of movies that'll be on there, but I still think it's kind of interesting to react to articles and websites that put out their worst movie list because it's like, do I agree? Do I disagree? So let's see if we agree or disagree with some of these lists right here. So starting off with Variety, that got things kicking off from this thumbnail. I I, I wonder if some of y'all agree because they got the Flash front and center if that deserves on the worst movies list. So this list is comprised of two people. So let's go through the first list. This is Owen. Owen Glibberman's five worst movies. Okay, first off, number one, he put Ghosted. A little tip. If you're making a worst of list, can you put it in the opposite order? Once I see number one, the impact of seeing the rest of these movies just does not hit the same. So variety, a little tip for you, okay? Flip the list, okay? Start with five and work your way to one. All right. But Ghosted, this was a romantic comedy that like was released on Apple TV. I didn't check it out because the trailers kind of looked awful to me. And this photo is a perfect representation of why. C do you notice that Chris Evans and uh, Ana de Armos, they are not in the same scene right now. This this is this is Chris Evans Photoshop next to her. And I heard a lot of the movie was like that, where it was just photo like green screen scenes like these actors. They made a movie. When two people are supposed to have romantic chemistry with each other, and for a large part of the movie, they filmed it separately, where Chris Evans was over here, this girl was over here, and through the power of green screen and VFX, they put them together, and it made for a pretty lackluster movie. Um, so that's, okay, I understand why it's number one. Asteroid City, I don't I don't know if that deserves it. It's definitely not Wes Anderson's best. Uh, I didn't love it as much as I wanted to, but I don't know if it deserves worst. Okay. Your place or mine, I uh, don't even have anything to comment. Did not even see this one. Ashton Kutcher movie. Okay, okay, okay. Now this, okay. Magic Mikey. I actually did see this movie. I went to the theaters to see this movie. In fact, I remember I made a deal with my lady because I think this was around the same week that Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey came out. I made her watch Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. <laughs> well, I just, you know, so I had to pay her back and she was like, I want to see Magic Mike 3. And I was like, you know what? I like Magic Mike 1. I like Magic Mike 2. Let's see Magic Mike 3. It was garbage. I didn't like it. Okay. Garbage may be a little harsh, but it was not good, man. The premise of this movie was kind of like, what the heck? It was about Magic Mike goes to the UK, and he's trying to turn the art of stripping into like a Broadway play. And that's the whole movie. It's him trying to figure out how to make stripping into a play. And he also has this love thing going on with Selma Hayek. Their chemistry did not really feel good. I was very disappointed with this movie, okay? The only good thing about this movie was the last dance in the movie. It was Artistically, it was pretty badass. Uh, just Google that or watch that on YouTube. But this movie, even if you're a Magic Mike fan, I think you're going to be disappointed. My lady was disappointed. And she had Channing Tatum jock just on the screen in her face. Come on. And you're still disappointed? That should let you need to know all you need to know. All right. Heart of Stone, uh, the Gal Gadot Netflix movie. Didn't check it out. Didn't look appealing to me. And it looks like, uh, for good reason, it made it on the worst list here. All right. Let's move on to Peter DeBerg's list here. And he's got some more familiar movies in here. Number one, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. It wasn't until I saw this list that I remembered, oh, my God, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey came out this year. It feels so long ago. But, uh, you know, I wouldn't disagree with them. I I knew this movie wasn't going to be great, but it was also like, oh, OK. All right. Yeah, I this is on a lot of people's list, by the way. Uh, we're going to go through a couple more lists from other websites. A lot of people have Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, number one. I wonder if a lot of people are going to feel that way. People are like, yeah, yep, agree. OK, so, yeah, a lot of people feeling that way, too. I've never saw Carmen. So, oh, it has Melissa Barrera in it, though? Is that Melissa Barrera? I, that looks like Melissa Barrera. I did not see Carmen, though. Yeah, it is Melissa Barrero. Oh, so sad. Uh, I did not see it, though. So, so sorry about that, Melissa. Uh, The Flash, number three. Okay, 
here's where we get to talking. Does the Flash deserve to be on the worst of lists? Okay, out of all the movies that came out this year, not comic book movies, all movies, do you think the Flash deserves to be on the worst of lists? I want to hear your thoughts right now. Whether yes, can I put up a poll? Let me see if I can put up a poll. Let's see if I can do it. Uh, how do I do this? What is it? What is it? What is it? Let's see. Uh, start a poll. Okay, there we go. Flash. Uh, I'm I'm making it right now, guys. Give me give me two seconds, and then you can vote on the screen. Flash should be on worst list. Okay, it's not great English, but you know what I mean. Yes or no? Okay, the poll has been started, my friends. You should see it pop up either on your phone or on your desktop. Vote right now. I will keep you informed on what I see. I don't know if I am I able to show that off. I think y'all can see that. Not it. okay. Uh, okay. Right now it is thirty six percent yes and sixty two percent no. Uh, okay. A lot of people are. Uh, you know what? Look. Obviously, this is a difficult one to talk about because there's a lot of things context wise outside of it that could warrant it right like obviously the ezra miller situation which i agree uh, i don't want ezra miller ever to be the flash again i think they should recast and give us a new flash character yes uh but looking at the movie just on its own some people will criticize the cgi i mean look at this image right here like this image was everywhere being made fun of the cgi was uh was pretty uh took some artistic liberties like the scenes were like he's in the the, the, the time bubble, whatever, and the and you got Henry Cavill looking like a 3D clay figure going, mm. I was like, oh, okay. Um, I I also hated the ending with 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 George Clooney in there and like all Sasha Kaye Supergirls essentially dies a hundred times in this movie. No closure on that. Like we end the we, freaking the flash the whole movie goes through like, okay, I can't change a thing about the past. I have to live with what I got. So what does he do? He changes the thing with the past and stays living with that. Like he doesn't learn his lesson so he can get his dad out of jail. Um, but other than that, I I I found the mother storyline beautiful. I really like Michael Keaton in there. Sasha Kaye was cool. I I thought it was fun. I it's I don't think it deserves to be on the worst list. So uh after 400 votes in here, it's it's starting to get closer. 44% yes. Uh, 56% no. So, you know what? There's a, a large enough chunk that believes that uh, freaking The Flash <laughs> deserves to be on a worse list here. I guess I guess The Flash will end up being on my uh, guilty pleasure list at the end of the year. Because uh, this is a movie that's got a lot of people against it, you know? So, I just thought that was interesting. I'll end the poll right there. Let's keep going. So, that's what we got for The Flash. All right. Oh, excuse me. Ah! There we go. Uh, paint. I did not see it, but uh, looking at this photo, Owen Wilson as a Bob Ross like guy can't be that bad. Can't be that bad. Uh, Kaluga, the ultimate cut. Okay, that's where we get into film, bro. Talk. What are you talking about? What are you talking about here? All right, let's go on to the next list. And this one might shock you. Okay, so this one has 20. Just to keep things uh, tight and, and concrete here, let's just jump to number 10 and work our way down there. From this worst list. Okay, so Ghosted again. You're seeing a pattern. If you were thinking about watching Ghosted <laughs> on Apple TV, no. And this kind of sucks for Apple TV because Apple TV has some great stuff on there, underrated things. They just came out with a Mark Wahlberg movie to damn well. I want to see it if it's good or not. Um, but you know, that that's kind of sucks for them. That, that I guess they were hoping star power, so that, that's still on there. Now, this this is where people are gonna be shocked. And let me tell you, there's another worst list here with a different article. They got FNAF on that list, too. Uh, people are putting Five Nights at Freddy's on their worst of movies list. Again, out of all the movies that came out this year, everything, FNAF is on there. So let me see if I can read this guy's reasoning. But obviously, uh, everything, opinion subjective. He might not be a fan. And we, we saw if you like Five Nights at Freddy's, it's mainly because you were a fan of the games and you understood a lot of the references and lore, and that made it really enjoyable for you. We saw a lot of people who just knew nothing, walked away kind of going, what? I don't. So the animatronics were the good guys. Then? Like they walked out confused. So let's see what he says. 
Uh, critics had a tough time engaging with the movie version of Five Nights at Freddy's, which features extremely R-rated subject matter in a PG-13 package, which is full of references and that casual audiences aren't able to understand. Basically, it's that rare major movie release that's for gamers only. Uh, I had plenty. I had a, pl a pretty decent time with it, though, despite the plot being a bit much. So at least he's self-aware. He's like, yeah, this is for gamers only. It's for the for the for you know the, the G Fuel gamer sub bros. It's for them. But that sucks that it ended up here, man. It's easy. It's, it's, people are like, FNAF was actually good. It was good. But yeah, it's a, we'll see it again on another list here. Uh, love again. Don't know anything about this, unfortunately. Just gonna move forward. God is a bullet. Well, he is a person in the sky, so he's not a bullet. That's why he got bad reviews. <laughs> Uh, the Pet Cemetery movie. I was uh, out of town when this movie came out, so I didn't end up reviewing it. I still want to see it because I want to give my thoughts on it. Uh, but we saw this coming. In fact, there's a rumor that Paramount has like the rights to Pet Cemetery, but to keep the rights, they have to make a movie like every three or four years, and they just made this movie to keep the rights. You know, that's why we're seeing so many Pet Cemetery movies being released every other year, whether it's that remake and now this one. Oh, but man, that it's like that that made it on there. Okay. I've said it. I do not make worst of movies lists just because I don't want to be too harsh on the filmmakers and I do, you know, I, how am I to judge and whatnot? But if I was making worst of movie lists, this this right here. This would be on it. I just this movie was so disappointing. I like I, the Expendables isn't like the greatest franchise out there. It's cheesy fun. It's a movie you see with your dad while you're eating some ribs together. Pass the barbecue sauce, Pap. Oh, look at look at Arnold over there. He's fine. Stallone ain't that great, Daddy. Ain't that great. That that's what you get. This movie felt like a fan film of some sort. Like I don't know where the budget went. This movie was just to launder some money and hide it away so somebody could buy themselves a new house and yacht. The plot twist in here with Sylvester Stallone's character was so awful. I Megan Fox was made the leader of the Expendables when she's never been in a previous movie. I don't know why you don't give that role to Jason Statham. Like, oh, it was just, uh, there's a part of the movie where Jason Statham becomes a bodyguard for an influencer. Does that tell you what you need to know? Jason Statham in this movie becomes a bodyguard for an influencer, and we have a whole scene about a Jake Paul type, Jake Paul Logan Paul type influencer going, "Hey, what's up, bros? I got here my girls," and it smacks a girl on the butt, and Jason Statham goes, "Hey, that's a lady. You don't talk like that to a lady." Okay, I'm an Expendables. I'll expend you a bill. All right, that's that's how that scene went down. It was, oh man, that's gonna end up on my very disappointed list. Okay, but you know, you know. Fool's Paradise. Didn't check it out, but man, star-studded cast in here. You had Charlie Day and all these people involved, and that movie turned out bad. Sorry about that. But I guess you were a fool to think it would be good. <laughs> I am a funny man. Uh, Assassin Club. Didn't see it, but just looking at the poster, that screams Walmart DVD bargain bin, does it not? You pick it up for a dollar at Walmart, and you hope it's okay. Now, this was interesting to me. I never heard about this movie until like the day before it was going to release. And I think it's the only movie this year that has a 0% on Rotten Tomatoes. Let me see. Freelance movie. Does it still have a 0% or did it go up? It's at 7% now. When this movie came out, it was at 0 <laughs> Oh, poor John Cena, man. But John Cena sometimes just have these random movies you never heard about coming out. And look, audiences thought it was okay. 77%. That's, that, that's that's something right there, but like John Cena even came out with like a, a movie where he was with Jackie Chan, John Cena. J like, how is that not big bucking news? You know, there was a Jackie Chan, John Cena movie called Hidden Strike. Nobody talked about it. Nobody went in to see this movie. But I like Jackie Chan. I like John Cena. Why did nobody talk about this, man? So we had that come out. Let's see. Ugh. Poor, poor John Cena, man. Keep going. And then number one ends up with the poo blood and honey, which is understandable. Let me go into the one more list here, and then we'll go on to another topic. I'm like, where is it? Was it this one? No, I think it was another list I had here. Was this the Irish Times? No, it was not this one. 
There was another list here that has Five Nights at Freddy's, and I was like, "What? How could you do this? This is a, uh, this is blasphemy. This is not cool." Let me pull up. I think it was maybe this one. Yarabrook. No, it was not this one. This just put putting up a bunch of other movies. Because they had a they had a paragraph where they wrote their reasoning for it, and I did want to find out why they had that. Or maybe if I just search FNAF, it'll pop up. Let's see if they have it in here. I know. I, oh, there it is. Six of the worst movies. Okay. Let's see what this person reasoning was. So they had it here. Five Nights at Freddy's. I didn't love it. I didn't hate it. I just didn't do much for me. I had high hopes, though. <laughs> that doesn't belong on your worst of movies list if you didn't hate it. But it's okay if you didn't love it. That feels like an in-between, then. The movie, at most, was just mid to you. Mid is an in-between. I don't think it belongs on a worst of list right there. They also had The Meg. I can understand. I actually kind of... That might end up on my guilty pleasure as well. I actually had fun with The Meg, too. I thought it was all right. I've seen a lot of people that hated it, but I was like, it was just as entertaining as the last one for me. Some underwater scenes were kind of cool. Jason said the needs to stop punching giant sharks like he can actually fight them, but it was all right. I did not watch Old Dads. I do like Bill Burr. I wanted to give it a shot, but then I saw that Rotten Tomato score and decided not to put it on. Now this. Okay. Now you're effing with me. No other list has Scream 6 on there. Huh? Why you got Scream 6 on there? This movie reminds me of why I stopped watching Scream movies. I don't think I've seen the last couple. <laughs> and I probably won't see the next 14. There's only six of them, buddy. Come on. That's probably why you didn't like it. You know, it's a continuation of the franchise. And Scream 6 was all about the legacy and, and the connection of all the previous ones. That They have a museum dedicated to things from the previous movie in there. But okay. Art is subjective. Some people didn't like it, but we all know Scream 7 is probably going to end up being the worst of them all because uh, I have no idea what they're trying to pull there, but we'll see. I just can't believe that ended up on someone's list. I quite enjoyed Scream 6. I had my issues with the ending and the twist reveal, but everything before that, pretty banging Scream movie, man. Totally killer. Now, I'm not going to say it belongs on a worst of list, but there were things about this movie that let me down. It started off really strong, totally killer, because you have the scene with the mom who survived the attack of the killings when she was 16, and then the guy shows back up again, and it's like a fight between Michael Myers and Laurie Strode. It was epic. Like, the guy in the mask is fighting her, and she's like, oh, I prepared for this moment. Busts out a gun, fights him, all this. Like, I was actually badass. I was like, oh, that's the kind of stuff I wanted to see in Halloween Ends. Um, but then the movie... Once she travels to the past and meets the younger version of her mom, her boy, her father, all the other friends, all of them are such unlikable, spoiled, a-hole characters. Uh, they try to give you a twist reveal about who the killer is, and it's like, okay. Uh, the only other cool thing that saves it was the ending where they, like, fight inside this gyrus, this, like, the spinning sphere thing, whatever. That was actually pretty cool. So I could understand someone not loving it that much. I wanted to like it more than I did but I don't think it belongs on a worst of list. Skidamarink. I don't know how many of y'all saw Skidamarink. I tried watching it. I, I, I turned it off, unfortunately. It's great that, that people want to experiment and do different things, but this movie was just literally like shots of corners of a room, shots of an open doorway with some creepy little noises, and I was like, what am I watching? I, it wasn't for me. I, it, some people really liked it and got into it and thought it was amazing. I was like, I, I couldn't. I couldn't. If you liked it, I'm happy for you. But th it was just not for me. It was not for me. All right. But that, those are some of the worst of lists. Uh, you know what? Just for funsies, I want to know. Start spamming right now what you think your worst of movies are. And uh, I'll discuss them whether I agree or not. And if you want to add your reasoning, that's even better because I, I would like to know. Uh, that's going to the back rooms though, Chris. Yeah, that probably is, but uh, I ain't going to the back rooms, you know. Uh, the Monkey King. Oh, let's see what's easy. The worst movies this year are Peter Pan and Wendy. Okay, I didn't think it was that bad, but yeah, it was nothing great. Uh, 65 was a letdown. That's the Adam Driver 
let me see if I can pull it up. Uh, 65. 65. That, yeah, that should have been an easy win. Like Adam Driver, futuristic dinosaurs. It was so generic. I get you. The mother. I don't know that one. The Little Mermaid. Oh, sorry. Don't like the Disney remakes. I see Old Dads. Okay, so you saw Old Dads. What? You can't add white powdered sugar bear on there? White powdered sugar bear was hilarious. I love that. But hey, it's all subjective. I understand. Somebody said Bobby. You think Bobby was the worst? Oh, come on, man. I didn't think it was the worst. I don't love it, love it like a lot of people. But I really liked it. I thought Greta Gerwig did something fun. I love the set designs. Ryan Gosling's can was hilarious. Um, I think it got overly sappy and preachy towards the end. But other than that, like, uh, I really liked it. I don't, I don't think it deserves the worst, but I understand. Yo, I, I'm going to agree with you on that one. That's probably going to end up on my disappointing list because there was a lot I wanted to see out of Insidious 5, man. That, and Patrick Wilson was directing it, and Patrick Wilson has worked with some of the best horror people, whether it's James Wan, Lee Winnell. It's like, come on. And it, it, it let me down. The, the movie was basically a recap of the first two films, and then the last 30 minutes, 20 minutes were something new. I was so let down by that. Uh, Let's see here what else you guys are saying. Blood and honey, just unnecessary in my opinion. Okay, yeah, I get you. I understand. Ant-Man 3, I don't know if it's... Whoa, okay, whoa. Avatar the Way of Water. No. What are you talking about, Avatar the Way of Water, buddy? That's the one. That's the movie where it made me go... Uh, let's see if I can pull it. <laughs> I was not the biggest Avatar fan. I think the first Avatar movie is just fine. It's okay. But I walked out of Avatar 2 going... Let me see if I can get, let me get this right. I walked out of Avatar 2 going... Oh, my God. I get it. it. Took a while to say I get it. But that was me once I walked out of Avatar The Way of Water. And then this was me after I got in the shower to, from the movie. Danny DeVito, you're a legend. I love you, man. <laughs> but uh, hey, subjective. Everything's subjective, man. If uh, it wasn't for you, I understand. I understand. Let's see what else so I can get naked Danny DeVito off my screen. Equalizer 3, really the worst. Uh, it wasn't like as good as the others, but man, was like Denzel Washington was freaking Michael Myers in this movie. This was the bloodiest, goriest, most action-packed of the equalizers and that made it entertaining it was definitely like 20 minutes a little too long uh but i i quite i i didn't think it was bad you know what oppenheimer was born in i see a lot of people saying that and i i get it i i get it. it's not for everybody especially if you're not that interested in the subject material but man the performances the style what what christopher nolan did is even at the ending i saw a lot of horror movies this year but the ending of Oppenheimer left me more scared than all those other movies. The thought of nuclear war just being around the corner. I was like, Oppenheimer did that. And the memes. Come on. Oppenheimer memes were worth it alone, buddy. Let me see what else we got going on. I'm trying to catch up to some of you guys. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Just trying to catch up. Uh, Ruby Gilmore, Teenage Kraken. I saw it. It was just fine. It's definitely a movie that like you just show to your little kid. It was to, no offense. It was nothing special to me. I I went in wanting to be it be okay, but it was just and it's it's that typical body changing story metaphor, like uh, turning red and things like that. It was it was like all right. I I I just thought it was fine. I, nothing special. Uh, Barbenheimer era. The Meg is bad. Big fat Greek wedding. Didn't see that one. The Marvels. The Marvels thrown in there. Of course, we got to throw in the Marvel movies. Okay. I see how it is. Uh, all right. I did someone saying Oppenheimer masterpiece. Okay, we got we got some movie aficionados in the chat. Very well expected. Good stuff. Good stuff. Okay.